I was hoping it wouldn't come up. What's happening? It is Super Nanny Saturday, and this week we are visiting the biggest family in Super Nanny history with 10 kids, the Costello family. So thank you for the recommendation that I added to the wheel. We landed on it, let's do it. And at the end, I will do an update on where they are now. Grab your beverages and let's dive in. Hi, we're the Costello family. I'm Amy. And I'm Dale. And we have 10 kids. Logan is 15, Harley is 14, Chaslin, who is 12, Joelle is 9, mm -mm, 11. Stop. He forgot his kid's age, and it wasn't even one year off. That's two years. We do put faith in the older kids to help out with the younger kids. She does not like to help out around the house. She does not like to lend a hand. You gotta keep an eye on I know, Mom. She's a very quiet, reserved person, and a lot of times reacts very negatively to having to watch her brothers and sisters. Surprise, surprise, the older children are having to do a lot of the caretaking for the younger children. Now, I'm not here to judge how many children a family should have. You are more than welcome to share your thoughts in the comments. But I will say, if a family chooses to have a lot of children, as the older children increase their responsibilities, they should also increase their freedoms. What I mean by this is when you have a very young child, they cannot take care of themselves at all. They can't get themselves dressed, they can't feed themselves, they can't do anything. They are completely dependent on a caretaker. And then they get to this age, it's magical, where suddenly you're not getting them dressed all the time. You're not the one brushing their teeth all the time. And they're starting to do these tasks for themselves. And then something even more beautiful happens. They get to an age where not only can they take care of themselves, but they can assist the family in family tasks, cooking, cleaning, helping with their little brothers or sisters. And these are lovely skills that are going to benefit them for years to come. But the trouble happens when a teenager like this doesn't also get an increase in freedom. Logan is the oldest, so he carries a very difficult role in the family because when Dale's gone, he has to be a fill-in for me and be my biggest helper. That's exactly what I'm talking about. A teenager is not an on-call babysitter. There is a huge difference between having responsibilities and having to be on call. So sitting down with your teenagers and saying, hey, these are the tasks that need to get done in the family, and I know you want me to bring you to baseball or chorus or whatever they're involved in, and we help each other, and I'm definitely gonna make sure you get to baseball practice and all of those things. Which one of these tasks do you wanna take on? They're not my kids. I mean, they're my brothers, but they're not my kids. It's, I mean, I'm, not the, I'm not a parent. It's not my responsibility to discipline them, to be watching them. Do you actually say to them, or do you feel like you can't, or? And my mom just kind of blows at me, just kind of, I mean, she really gets mad, like, you know, it's your responsibility as the oldest. This is so sad, and this is the problem with authoritarian parenting. Oh, it's my way or the highway, as long as you live under my roof. Yep, as, as soon as I can get out from underneath this roof, I'm out of here. See you later. What is the point in having children then? I mean, I didn't share this, but in the intro package, there was a part where mom shared how it was her dream to have 12 children. Okay, why, why 12, but okay. And now it kind of makes sense. It, it's, it's as if she doesn't even care if the children are happy as long as she hits that number 12. I mean, am I judging this too harshly? Because if I knew that my child was miserable, I would not continue to add more children to the family because it puts more strain on my other child. I, am I missing something? This is a lot. And, and who takes care of them outside? Usually the older kids are supposed to keep an eye on the younger kids. Right. I went out to have a look. The kids were just roughhousing, but when mum saw what was going on, she just flew off the handle with Carly. You stop it! You know. I'm, not, I'm not doing anything. So yeah. You stop it from happening. You're the oldest one out there. You don't just sit there and watch it. I do not blame Joe Frost. Oh, chills, not good chills, bad chills. 
Then they're talking. Oh, okay, let me catch you up because I don't know what I can include. By the way, if my clips are ever super short, it's because the way YouTube works is we have something called fair use, which means that you can use other people's property but transform it into original content, either for education or entertainment purposes. So that's why the clips are so short. Please watch the full video. I link it in the description of every video. So now that I got that out of the way, what you didn't see, or maybe you did see, was mom has the older children, the second oldest and the third oldest outside with the younger children. And then the younger children are roughhousing. And then she begins to yell at them that they're not watching them properly. Then they come inside and the older girls want to go outside just to have fun themselves, you know, and like be a kid themselves. And she says, no, when Joe Frost asks, because it's observation day, look at her. She, she's outside taking a breather right now because she needs it so bad. When she asks them, asks mom like what's going on she's like well they don't take care of the kids and they da, 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 da. and then somebody in the background gets hurt because of course there's a million other children in the house and the mother then gets upset at, because they're having the conversation and somebody else gets hurt I, did that, that any of that make sense so she's mad that the children aren't doing her job I, oh and before i forget ooh, ooh, there we go before i forget <laughs> Right here, my brother made this, if you're new here, my brother made this, he does 3D printing and this awesome little thing where I change out the numbers as I get subscribers. And now that we've hit over a thousand, I'm struggling because I don't have enough numbers. I think we're at 1115 right now at the time of filming. So I didn't have any more ones. So that's why there's a blank in case you're wondering. Um, my husband was saying, just, just make it a two. I'm like, no, but I'm not at that subscriber and I don't want to go backwards. So this is what I have. The good news is, is my brother is going to surprise me. He's making a new one. So maybe that'll be next week in the videos. Let's keep watching. What mom had to say, what do you feel about that? I'm really angry because I, I do help out with her and I do watch the kids when I'm out there. My mom doesn't know like half the thing that's going on around here. I don't know why this family called Super Nanny. Did mom call? Did dad call? Were they recruited? How did this happen? Because we're not talking about Super Nanny topics. We're not talking about what we usually talk about on this channel. Tantrums, handling, lying, threatening, uh, corporal punishment, all the things that are normally on these Super Nanny episodes. We're just spending all of this time what does mom think? Does she think that Joe Frost is going to come in and teach the teenagers how to discipline? No. No. <laughs> no. Right? What are you writing, Corbin? What are you writing, Corbin? Did you throw it away? Yeah. Throw it away now. Throw it away now. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, something we can grab onto because this is not uncommon. There's a reason why one child is either saying hurtful things or writing hurtful things about another one. It doesn't justify it, but by you not addressing those problems, they fester. Think of them like bacteria. They multiply. So what would you do instead? Slow down sometimes not even addressing it in that moment and just keeping it in mind and bringing it up later is a good idea. Sometimes you might just pull the victim out of the room first and be like, Hey, I noticed your brother, you know, right. Did you see what he was writing? Yeah. And then just let them share their feelings. You don't have to solve the problem right away. How do you, how do you feel about that? That must've been really hurtful to see. And then maybe, maybe even teach, that child how to address their brother because you're not always going to be there to stand up for your kids either. You have to give them a voice. It's a skill to teach assertiveness. And then for the older child, if you don't address it at that moment, maybe you address it later in the day and you go, you know, I, I noticed you were writing something down. You must be having some really like bad feelings about your sister right now. What's going on? Tell me about it. If you don't say it in an accusatory way, they won't be defensive. They can open up and then you can help them teach them how to work things out with their sibling because eventually they will have relationships outside of your home where they need to work things out. I would hope Carly would be able to say, you know, my mother inspired me because 
she understood me because she lifted me up because... Do you honestly think she could say that right now? I, I don't think right now she could say that. No. But you know what, if we were to be really truthful, you probably didn't have a mom that said that with you, did you? Mm -mm. I couldn't be nodding my head anymore as I was listening to this parent meeting. She goes over how it's just unfair to the children. And then she transitions to the point where she brings up the mother's own childhood and the mother begins to cry. It makes me think of, what's that family? Bower sock. Remember the Bower sock mom? I'll put the card there for that family. The Bower sock mom, she starts to break down because she was abused as a child. I'm looking forward to seeing the changes now that the teaching will begin. Let mom go out so that she could see dad is capable of looking after the kids just for that short period of time. That one belongs to you, Logan. Um, the green one I've got here belongs to yourself, Carly. But there is one catch. I've given the four elder children T-shirts to wear that say off duty. So dad can't rely on them. <laughs> Oh, Joe Frost's sense of humor, I, I love. She gives the older children shirts that say off duty because dad is in charge. And my first thought when she said dad was in charge was he won't be in charge. He's just going to have the older kids do it. <laughs> oh, goodness. A little, little fun because sometimes it gets too serious. We got to like have a little bit of fun in between. What I want to do with this calendar is basically to jot down with the kids a particular event on a particular day that you guys know you can stick to. There's many times when the kids say, hey, you know, I like to go, go, go-kart. Okay, yeah, okay, let's go next week. And it's just like, it's kind of like forgotten by us. The first thing we get to see Joe Frost implement is a schedule where there are dates and times set to spend time with their children. So you can see here that mom and daughter are going to the spa. The daughter is getting a little bit choked up because she says she it's been at least over a year since she's been able to do anything with her mom. Broken promises break hearts. Logan's afraid to speak to his parents. So what I have done is set up a curtain so that he can freely express himself without feeling intimidated by mom and dad's reactions. I looked at Logan's face at the end of the discussion and I did not see a sense of relief. Dale knows what I'm getting at. I guess at first I was hoping it wouldn't come up. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> We're sitting down. Let me catch up. We're sitting down and there's this curtain in between mom and dad and the oldest son so that the son can be able to share his feelings without seeing his parents' reaction. It makes me think of Love is Blind. <laughs> Do you watch that? Where you get to talk to somebody in the pods and that's how you fall in love. Anyway, now we find out that there's this skeleton in a closet that is between the son and the father and the dad saying he, he thought it wasn't going to come up. And I just, we have to, we have to know what is the skeleton? Um, drinking has been an issue. Dale uses that to help with his stress, forcing Logan to grow up and see things that he shouldn't have to see. When he does drink and it gets out of hand, things happen and there have been a couple times when he's actually had to go into the hospital. Logan and I have had to take all the kids to soccer games while dad was in the back of the van, passed out. It's drinking. I didn't see that one coming. It's sad all around. Has he gotten help since? Is this an old issue? Is he sober now? There's a lot of question marks I have. So what else is new? Nothing. Nothing? Just Watch your legs. Here we go. Here we go. Give me a hug. <laughs> the second meeting starts out really positive. We find out that the older child goes ice skating with his girlfriend, gets to be a normal 15 year old. Then the dad, he's outside kicking the ball with the kids, and you know, the responsibility isn't just on the older teenagers. And then the music shifts. And that lets us know something's about to change. And we have this security footage. Repeat 
I don't want. I don't want them to go. No. She wouldn't even get me. She just really gets it. Even my dad gets real mad. She just gets it like she just pretend it's better. And what's gonna happen when they leave? And I believe Joe Frost brings it up because she's trying to express to these parents, changes are great if you continue them. If not, the consistency won't be there, which means the trust won't be there. Do you think that you need help? I do. Guess I can't do without it. Uh, with what? The alcohol. Dad's been secretly drinking and hiding beer all around the house. The first person that he wanted to talk to was his wife. Hey, I'm going to go to the support group tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to the support group tonight. I'm sorry for everything, OK? That's OK. This was a hard one for personal reasons, but I must say that kids don't want perfect. They want real. And when somebody misses the mark to be told that everything's sunshine and rainbows when they know it's not, hurts. If you have anyone that is struggling with addiction uh, or you are struggling with addiction, I hope that you seek help. There is help out there that is free and you can have a life that you never thought was possible. I want a big group hug from all of you. Yeah. Come here, seriously. I would say it is a happier house. I believe I am a better dad. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, something I will continue. Okay. Looks like as of filming, Dale is currently sober and has been attending his counseling for six weeks. Let's see where they are now. I am not gonna lie, I am nervous. We have had some updates on this channel. Please be a good update. Please be a good update. This aired in 2009. Amy and Dale divorced. Amy remarried and had three kids with a different man. Ah, uh, that wasn't on my bingo card. This meant Amy finally achieved her dream of having 12 children. Amy was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2010, but thankfully recovered. Two years later, Logan got married and later became a father. We have a lot of different things to look at. <laughs> we have a MySpace. Is Logan my age? Let's see. Let's see the age real quick. I was born in 87. So Logan, where's Logan? He's at the top. He was born in 92. He's only five years younger than me. Not much. Let's check out his Instagram first. I don't even know if my space opens up anymore. All right, there's Logan and his, his baby, I'm assuming. Joelle's Instagram. Come on, pictures, let's go. Come on, pictures, let's go. Okay, we have just the main photo. Let's see what you're doing, Corbin. I can't make it bigger. So they're all private. There's Addison. That's it for the Costello family. Starting next week, there will be two episodes. There will still be a Super Nanny Saturday episode on Saturday, but there will be an additional video where we will be visiting vlogs. Vlogs of real life parents today with real life struggles. And so, Keep your notifications on, subscribe if you like it here. I'm happy to see you and I'll see you next time. Bye.